even though our ancestors historically might have eaten a little meat or seafood, it is better to be vegan. I remember you telling me like 10 years ago, you looked at me and you go, no, vegans probably do have the longest lifespan and health span. Yes, I think, well, that's true in today's society because what I'm saying here is this. If you couldn't supplement with B12, if you lived, you know, where people didn't know that 50 years ago, then maybe the vegan did not have the longest lifespan. You're better off eating a little bit of animal products because you need those extra nutrients animal products get you, right. give you. But with today's opportunity to use supplements to fix the minor things that a, new, that a vegan diet doesn't have, you can make, fill those gaps without eating animal products. Mm -hmm. And that most likely is gonna give you a longer lifespan compared to giving a little bit of animal products to get the extra zinc and B12. Right. You know. And it's nice too that it's better for the environment and you know, animals. It's, so there's like other, other benefits to it as well. But the fact that you're able to eat the gold standard, you are, you do have the ability now with, with science fusing with natural foods to create the perfect diet. Would you agree? Yes. Given the climate, given some toxins and stuff in the environment. Sure. And the other thing that's new in human history and new in nutritional science is what you have started to bring up the protein issue. Mm -hmm. Because we can't ignore all these studies that have shown that more animal protein dials up a shorter life. So in a dose dependent way, and we don't have one study now, we have numerous studies, scores of them, looking at the same question, that as you regulate animal protein in the diet, does that extend life or shorten life? And we know, we know now through many corroborative studies showing the same thing, that it shortens lifespan in a dose dependent manner. And what really flipped nutritional scientists' heads around was that they realized that more plant protein made for longer life. So as more, more animal protein, so we know that plant protein has the benefits that animal protein doesn't have, particularly, I'm thinking it's because when you eat animal protein, you overshoot your protein needs. And when you overshoot your proteins, it activates cancer causing, it turns on cancer causing genes. Like IGF-1. Like IGF-1. IGF-1 is a hormone that can turn on cancer promotion, but there's other things that go on in the cell that prevent, that, that, that prevents silencing of abnormal genes. And the animal protein drives that. But the plant protein increasing plant protein helps maintain brain size, immune system strength, and muscle and bone integrity with aging without overshooting your protein needs. And so while most plant-based advocates over the last two decades said, don't worry about protein, just eat anything to get enough protein, it's kind of not true. It's that we do, especially as we get older, we have to pay attention to protein adequacy and and get and eating and eating, eating foods that are high in plant protein, like hemp seeds and broccoli and beans and soybeans, these things do add to longevity because we're conscious of eating enough of the higher protein plant foods and not make the diet all fruit. Right. Or not make the diet all rice like a macrobiotic diet or all potato. We're actually paying attention and we have the data to show that these um, concepts that I've been preaching over the last three decades have an undisputable amount of corroborative evidence now to show it's their efficacy. Which the carnivore, the carnivore trolls are really not going to like you saying that. They do not like that. And they really believe that eating full on meat and mm. heavy, heavy dairy and cheese and raw this, raw that mm. helps their ailments. Which it's so crazy that you can have two... Diametrically opposed viewpoints. That both yeah. claim longevity promoting. You know, you could claim anything. Mm -hmm. But there's no science to show that let's, you know. For all the people out there who, who are vacillating and don't know what to believe, it really fascinates me that there is no science. Right. No science to show that eating community. more meat makes you live longer. No. Yeah. And the more you dig into it, and there are, I have seen studies, and we talked about this too, that shows dairy um, helps you lose weight or helps your heart, you know, you get down the saturated fat. And it's so funny when you realize, oh, that one was funded by the dairy industry. Oh, they were comparing that with whole milk to skim milk and then said skim milk was healthier. Whatever it's it is, so is that you could look at short-term studies that don't look at, but if you look at long-term studies that follow hundreds of thousands of people, right? You know, and we have to look at all the studies. Yeah. And there's too much evidence to ignore the people who are on those type of animal, you know, keto and carnivore diets. They have to ignore 90% of the studies to find some data to justify what they want to preach. Right. But we've talked about it before on these podcasts that there are some advantages for some people to, to go into ketosis, like if they have uh, you know, a seizure disorder, 
or people who are schizophrenia, have schizophrenia, you could see being ketosis could help them. Right. And there were some people who are allergic to beans and they just cut out, they, were, they have allergies to certain types of food elements and by going off all the things they're sensitive to, they feel a little better, but that's so rare. What it, it's so unusual that you that it's much that it's really it's not a diet style that's for that would be even for discussed for the masses because it's yeah. going to put a cause too much needless tragedy and premature death. That makes sense. Yeah.